Hi, my name is Dr. Won Ga Kim. I am the clarinet professor at the University of Oregon School of Music and Dance. I'm also the clarinetist with the Oregon Wind Quintet. I'm making this video today to talk about clarinet and the great chamber music uh, tradition that the, ins the instrument inspired to create over time. Uh, clarinet came to the standard woodwind family of orchestra around uh, and, uh, late 1700s. It was invented at the beginning of that century and composers uh, quickly started picking it up like Mozart, the great composer from classical era, fell in love with the clarinet after hearing and meeting uh, the, the wonderful clarinetist of his time, Anton Stadler, and he wrote the famous clarinet concerto as well as uh, many other chamber music, uh, Kegelstadt Trio for clarinet, viola, and piano. It's a little segment I played at the beginning. It's from that, uh, the first movement. Mozart had this wonderful clarinet quintet, and composers following his time, Karl Maria von Weber had a very exciting virtuosic uh, quintet for clarinet and strings. Johannes Brahms later, um, coming back from his retirement, wrote a wonderful clarinet quintet as well as a trio for clarinet, cello, and piano just a few years before his death. So you see that it's very uh, popular for composers to write for clarinet and mix with uh, strings. So before I go further, I'd like to play uh, an excerpt from second movement from Mozart's clarinet quintet. And here you'll see the wonderful use of the instrument as a, as a very subtle vocal uh, soloist but it also blends extremely well with the string texture. The instrument is very versatile. It can play slow, beautiful solos, um, as you just heard from the second movement, but also very virtuosic, fast passages without much difficulty. Clarinet can also play powerful uh, forte that fills a big hall, but also uh, play extremely quiet, like a whispering of human voice. So going back to chamber music, I mentioned that one of the most gratifying aspects of playing chamber music is being able to communicate with other players at a very intimate level. And sometimes um, this can work very naturally. So um, I would point out three important things when you work on the chamber music. First and foremost, you have to know the music you're playing. Of course, we do that all the time. But um, in this case, not just your solo part or the ensemble score, but every individual part and how it relates to the grand scheme of the structure of the piece. And uh, it's important to be able to sing literally every part in the score uh, by heart. Only then you can be free from the sheet music in front of you and truly work 
and respond and communicate with each other. Second, um, because you do not have a conductor, it is very important to learn how to keep the time and also um, cue each other in the entrances. This uh, gets easier um, as you practice. Um, sometimes the cueing or gestures are uh, become a very natural part of the music itself. So we're not making an awkward motion or distracting motions and such. I'd like to play a short clip again, excerpt from Mozart Quintet. The, that's the example I'm using today. And um, this is a trio, second trio from the Minuet movement. And here you'll see all the musicians, the string quartet and uh, myself, are almost waltzing and dancing to, to this um, really fun uh, a minuet. And um, of course, as we learn the music, we would um, practice skipping the time. Having performed this piece over 50 times, and the uh, string quartets tend to work the same way, uh, we only had perhaps two rehearsals. But it's, it's really exciting to see how immediately we can connect and click from, from this music. So um, again, watch how the, the physical uh, dancing is accomplished as a result of playing the music. One of the most difficult aspects of playing chamber music is uh, playing with good intonation. When you're playing with a non-fixed pitch instrument, like a piano, you have to stay flexible and listen very carefully. You have to understand the basic properties of chord function. For example, finding the root and which part of the chord that you're playing. If you're playing third on a major chord, you're likely to be sharp. So we'd like to compensate that. Um, also for clarinet, as we play loud in a lower register, it, things go flat. So we have to compensate for that. When we're playing very soft in the upper register, things to, tend to go high. So again, we'd like to adjust those. And this becomes, um, over time, part of uh, your, the very fabric of our uh, playing mechanism. So it sounds very difficult. But again, through practice, we can overcome these difficulties. And I cannot emphasize enough that it's, it's all about listening. I'd like to end this clip with an excerpt from the final movement of Mozart's clarinet quintet. And here, um, it's a theme and variation movement. It's a really kind of delightful classical melody that Mozart is working very skillfully to, uh, to explore different characters. So sometimes things are very light, we have a, a, a sad movement where viola all of a sudden starts coming in with melodic figure and uh, the clarinet uh, comes in with very virtuosic runs uh, going back and forth with the first violin. And again, I think this is the beauty of chamber music, how each instrument sort of come out of texture. And it's even though the, the piece is written as a quintet, um, it, it morphs very quickly from a duet, so violin, second violin clarinet into a trio with the viola, cello, and clarinet, and the full quintet, and so on. So here is the um, excerpt from the final movement of Mozart Quintet. <laughs> Thank you.
As much as the music's important, I think the people you get to play with, that's really the, the best part. I've made some of my great uh, friends in life uh, through playing chamber music, and um, I can always look forward to more experiences, meeting new people, new colleagues in this manner. So once again, I encourage you to explore uh, playing chamber music as small as a duo for two clarinets all the way to the clarinet quintets, or septets, and beyond, uh, ranging from Baroque, Classical, to tons and tons of works that are being written uh, in present days. So again, good luck um, with your practicing, and um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you for having me.